Hi, I'm Mem from 21 Readers. Today I'm doing the mid-year book freakout tag, a great way to celebrate the middle of the year. I've read 54 books so far this year, a little over halfway of my goal of 100, and it's my first year on booktube, so first time doing my tag. First question, best book you've read so far this year is absolutely Notes on an Execution by Danya Kukovka. It's a beautiful literary fiction novel that also has mystery thriller elements. The main story is a man on death row, and we're following the story told from three women who were big influences on his life. And it was a beautifully told story, I was completely captivated throughout. I would recommend it for fans of literary fiction, for fans of mystery thrillers, and for fans of well-developed characters. Next is best sequel. I've only read two sequels so far this year. My favorite of those has been Finley Donovan Knocks Him Dead. This is a cozy mystery. I gave it four stars. It was a fun time. I did like the original. Finley Donovan is killing it better. I think my favorite thing about this series is the fact that it's like not your typical protagonist in a mystery thriller, but just a working mom trying to get through life who is the one task with doing these murders. Next is a new release you haven't gotten to yet. For this one I'm going with A Lesbiana's Guide to Catholic School. This is an LGBTYA contemporary and it's a debut novel. I enjoy reading books that have the intersection of LGBT themes with religion so I'm looking forward to reading this one. I'm on hold at the library so hopefully this summer I get to it. Next is most anticipated release for the rest of 2022. I'm gonna say Heatwave by TJ Klune. This is the third book in his YA superhero series. We're following teens who are queer and enjoy writing superhero fans fiction and also has great ADHD rep so I'm excited to see how this trilogy finishes with Heat Wave. Another one I wanted to mention for anticipated release for the end of the year is Kiss Her Once For Me by Alison Cochran. This is her sophomore novel after releasing with Charm Offensive last year. This one's a Christmas female-female romance. I was very grateful to receive an arc of this and read it last week and gave it five stars. Despite already reading Kiss Her Once For Me, I'm still anticipating its release on November 1st so that I can have a physical copy just like I have my physical copy of Charm so that they can be together. And there were definitely passages in Kiss Her Once For Me that I want to revisit and tab and definitely just reread this Christmas romance during winter time during the holiday time. Biggest disappointment is next and that's going to be Jar of Hearts by Jennifer Hillier. This book I saw a lot of people giving five stars especially at the end of last year so I read this in January and I gave it one star because it was incredibly disturbing. There's types of mystery thrillers that are for me and some that aren't and Jar of Hearts made me realize that that type of thriller is very much not for me. Next is Biggest Surprise. For me that's The Last House on Needless Street, a horror. The fact that I gave it five stars was surprising because I heard it was weird so I was wasn't sure how invested I was going to be in the story or the characters but I ended up giving it five stars and I was very engaged the whole time so that was a surprising five star for me. I was expecting it to just be average. Next is new favorite author and that goes to Celia Lasky. I've given both of her books five stars that I read this year. So Happy For You was my favorite book that I've read in June so far. This one's a contemporary fiction with thrilling elements where we're following our main character who's a lesbian and gets asked to be the maid of honor in her straight friend's wedding. It basically is a satirical look at the wedding industry I really enjoyed the topics of conversation about the wedding industry and also about feeling connected to a friend and then realizing differences in priorities when it comes to weddings and relationships. So I definitely resonated with the characters and so happy for you. I debated putting it in best book right next to Notes on an Execution, but I think I liked Notes on an Execution a little bit more than So Happy For You. However, I enjoyed this main character the most for So Happy For You. Her other book, Under the Rainbow, I also gave five stars. Under the Rainbow is a satirical look at social activism because we're following a group of people in an LGBT activism group that moved to a small town to work on getting them to be more open-minded and so each chapter are following a different person in the town. I enjoyed the commentary in this one as well as the character arcs of this town going from bigoted to open-minded by the end and those are her only two books so far so I'm definitely on board with this author's career whatever she writes next. Next is new fictional crush, Skip. Next is new favorite character, and that's going to be Molly in The Maid by Nita Prose. She's neurodivergent, it's not named on page. It was definitely a unique reading experience reading from Molly. She has definitely stuck with me. I wanna read more neurodivergent characters in books by own voices authors. Next is book that made you cry. A lot have made me cry. My most recent cry has been You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty by Akwike Emeze. This was one where I cried at the end and I wasn't expecting to cry, but the ending was just so poignant and beautiful that I did. And this one's a literary romance where we're following our main character who is a widow and is finding love after her husband has died and there's LGBT representation in this as well. The storylines of love and grief intersecting with each other was just beautifully done here. Book that made you happy. All of the books that I've mentioned so far that weren't disappointments have made me happy but in order to talk about a new book I'll go ahead and say Golden Boys by Phil Stamper. This is a YA contemporary where we're following four boys who are all going to different places for the summer and they try to continue their connection throughout the summer 
I was really happy with how they tried to stay connected and how they each had their own interpersonal arcs throughout and had a great summer. So it was just a fun summer rom-com read and it made me happy. Next is Most Beautiful Book You've Bought This Year and that's definitely going to be I Kiss Cheryl Wheeler by Casey McQuiston, the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition. The Spine is definitely a standout as well as this lavender color with the pink. This is the book I also gave five stars. The exploration of LGBT themes intersecting with religion was resonant throughout and definitely why I gave us five stars. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? I feel like there's too many to name but also none have a sense of urgency that they need to be in this video. For the sake of answering the question, I mostly read audiobooks through my library or through book of the month but I do have some books that I purchase myself and so I guess in terms of urgency I should try to read books that I've purchased for myself over the past year and so that includes Fresh by Margot Wood which is a new adult queer contemporary and also She Memes Well by Quinta Brunson who is a comedian and the creator and star of Albert Elementary. These are the two that I'm most interested in reading from the physical books up here that I feel like I should go ahead and read since I did spend money on them. Tell me in the comments your thoughts on any of these books. I hope you're all having a great reading year and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!